Unknown vessel. Identify yourself or you will be destroyed. I'm not detecting any deviation, sir. Give them some time. Ten seconds passed. Nothing, sir. Fire a warning shot. The vessel stopped with impossible swiftness. A second later, it seemingly blinked out of existence. What the hell was that? Target lock warnings began to blare within the station. Get me a lock on that ship now. The ship re-entered reality only one millimeter from the Dura glass window of the outpost, roughly three meters wide, a meter tall, with brutal and angular wings protruding from a perfectly spherical metal core. On the front side of this orb, a single beady red sensor shone brightly, scanning the station and everyone in it. The back side of the orb was defined by a protruding engine that let off an incredibly bright white glow. Station Master Lar fell off his chair in terror. Communications Officer Watt fainted at once, and Weapons Handler Yule simply stared in astonishment. The ship knew all of this, concluding its scan in a fraction of a millisecond, pausing a few seconds to ensure nothing was missed, and blinked out of reality once more. Yule, man Watt's station at once! Hail the fleet! Watt rushed to the emergency hail button that sat front and center on the communications panel. Out of the corner of his fourth eye, he saw the unknown vessel blink back into reality, this time substantially further away. Only the dull red glow of the orb sensor could be seen. Slamming his claws down upon the emergency button, Watt didn't even have time to process what occurred next. Sensing the transmission for help being sent, the orb momentarily outshone every star in the galaxy sending a beam of energy toward the station. The red light emanating from the orb returned only half a second later, but the station and its crew could no longer see it. Within that half-second burst, the orb had completely deleted everything within 100 meters of the station. For the first time in this universe's history, a point in space reached the ever-elusive absolute zero. After blinking in and out of reality one more time, the ship returned to its original course, a straight shot to the planet Zipta, the capital world of the Toran Republic. 200 light seconds from the unknown vessel and closing fast were the Zipton Outer Perimeter Fleet. Standing 1,000 strong, this mighty armada fell under the control of Admiral Howell. Hardened by countless battles over the last 15 millennia, she took pride in her position as the first line of defense for her beloved Republic's crown jewel. Her FTL sensors were detecting a small object, the unknown vessel, but she was made nervous by the lack of any station on even the most powerful of sensors. Howell began to suspect a false alarm, wondering if some glitch in the system had confused this empty pocket of space for a station under attack. She was brought back to reality alongside the rest of her fleet only seconds later. Pesh! Status report! First Officer Pesh massaged his forehead, fighting through the pain he gave a response. Whole fleet just got knocked out of FTL, pulling up visual on the unknown vessel now. The bridge of Howell's flagship, the Ironclad, went completely silent. This little orb with angular wings melded into its form had somehow ripped through space and time, pulling an entire battle fleet out of warp space, and it just sat there. The dim red glow of its sensors made Hool nervous. It was watching them, scanning for weaknesses or maybe threats. Try to hail it. Charge up the spinal mount. Tell the fleet to pull back to a distance of at least one light second. Yes, ma'am. Howell studied the curious vessel, then came to a shocking realization. We're not moving, ma'am. We're stationary in comparison to all other frames of reference. That's not possible, gravity always. See? Howell quickly scanned the nav map in front of her. Did the fleet receive the order to move? She didn't need the answer to that question because she had already come to terms with reality. That thing, it's holding us in place. Orders, mammon? Howell glanced around the bridge. Every sensor output the same result. Originally, this thing was headed toward Zipta. She couldn't let it achieve its goal. All ships, fire at will! The familiar booming of gunfire filled Howell's ears, and the recoil of the cannons reverberated through her body. Under normal circumstances, she'd feel relieved. These were no normal circumstances. Her paws gripped her chair tightly. After 30 seconds of constant bombardment, she relaxed enough to give the order, all ships cease fire. Hool glared at the screen in front of her, waiting for the dust to clear in the area where this vessel was last seen. 
She didn't risk blinking for fear of missing it. She nearly passed out from holding her breath so long. But eventually, the smoke began to clear. She exhaled deeply, closing her eyes and trying to relax. When she opened her eyes, it was as if she'd been punched squarely on the jaw. Fire at will! Throw everything you've got at it! The damn thing was still there. 30 seconds of bombardment from an entire fleet and the damn thing didn't so much as get scratched. Captains are reporting in. Movement systems restored. Aim the spinal mount. Hit this bastard hard. Just before the weapon could fire, the little ship disappeared, re-emerging milliseconds later some ten light seconds away. The beady red orb began to glow brightly once more, turning a pure and blinding white. At least that's what was shown on visuals some ten seconds after it was already well on its way. The sensors saw it coming from the beginning, ten seconds before Howell and her fleet were turned to cinders. Every single FTL sensor array within the thousand-strong armada overloaded and crashed. The stalwart defenders of Zipta were no more. Tired of attempting to slowly and non-confrontationally approach the capital world, the orb simply jumped within visual range of Zipta and waited for high command to remember to send it the translated language of these aliens. The ship's artificial consciousness had grown quite tired of these aliens constantly charging weapons and shooting at it. It hadn't done anything but travel in a straight line for crying out loud. After zipping around the planet a couple of times to scan its surroundings, the ship was displeased to learn that well over a hundred thousand guns had already been trained on it. Thinking to itself those damn aliens never learn. It simply spooled up its interdimensional energy link and let slip the dogs of war one last time, erasing every weapon within a light year to ensure no more hostilities could take place from now on. After surveying its surroundings, jumping from viewport to viewport to find humor in the shocked expressions of military vessel captains who could no longer find their sidearms at their hip, or even the main guns of their ships. The orb's creators had told it to stop finding humor in others' discomfort. The ship had tried, but these others were just so damn annoying that the orb stopped listening. One alien ship of massive size attempted to ram the orb. They succeeded but came to an immediate stop upon collision. The comparatively tiny ship simply remained still, its red eye glowing in amusement at these aliens' attempts to assail it. They certainly were determined, it thought. In one last final act of spite, the ship decided to blink into existence inside one of these now disarmed ships right behind its captain. The look of terror on the captain's face as he slowly turned his chair around to face the ship's eye was priceless. Even more humorous was the detection of biological waste leaking from the captain. The orb blinked away in hysterics, and the captain of that alien ship was left with soiled pants and considerable embarrassment. Tired of waiting for command, the ship decided to warp directly in front of the president of this alien republic below it. The president fell down, obviously not expecting a floating orb with wings to pop into existence within his secret and secure underground bunker. The ship's red eye focused on the president for a moment. It could sense the alien's heart rate was erratic. Poor thing, it thought, if only his underlings had been more cooperative. One of the president's guards threw something at the ship. That's it! These damn aliens keep hitting me! The ship turned instantaneously to face the guard charging up its capacitors with enough force to remove this whole damned universe. Those pesky little aliens are going to pay. No more abuse. No more conflict. No more universe. <laughs> President Poplu stared in horror as another being materialized in his bunker. This time it was a bipedal and decidedly organic being. It had materialized directly in front of the red eye that had begun to glow brightly white. After a few seconds of an incredibly tense stare-down, the orb's eye returned to the dull red color it had been previously. After pushing a few buttons on his wrist, the biped spoke. Return home construct. With the exchange finished, the orb dematerialized, disappearing just as quickly as it had appeared in the first place. President Poplu pinched himself. Am I dreaming? The biped turned around. It was at this moment that Poplu noticed it was levitating. Cloaked in a mix of gray and bright white, the biped before him exuded a sense of power. No, it seemed to radiate energy with its mere presence. Where Poplu presumed eyes would normally be located, only searing white energy could be found. Poplu had to shield his eyes to avoid squinting. No, you are not. 
The being reached out a hand with incredible grace. Poplu took it and pulled himself up to his feet. Who are you? I am Frederick Torvis, current High Counselor of the Greater Realm of Humankind. You must be President Poplu of the Toran Republic. Now it was Poplu's turn to extend his hand. Yes, I am. I hate to be so direct, but what exactly was that thing? The human shook Poplu's hand firmly while responding, A malfunctioning human probe. It was on its way to inform you of the good news. That news being, your universe will not be harvested for energy. Poplu went quiet for a moment. The human now decided to elaborate. Human technology uses the power of entire universes to function properly. We have what is an essentially infinite number of probes cataloging universes to see which ones do or don't contain life. Poplu was having a hard time comprehending what this human was saying. A nearby science advisor, however, was practically foaming at the mouth to know more. A nearby admiral addressed a more pressing concern. Do these probes normally demilitarize an entire race? The human's face softened. I'm sorry to say that it did more than demilitarize you. At least 124,375 of your servicemen have perished at the hand of the probe. The human put up a hand as if to silence any discourse that may have otherwise boiled over. They will be brought back, and the Council has already decided upon a reparation of one universal unit to ensure our people end on the right footing. The nearby science advisor couldn't contain her excitement and demanded to know, is a universal unit, well... The human knew exactly what she was asking and answered with a grin, yes, the entire energy content of one universe, no strings attached. The science advisor had to sit down to avoid fainting. Humanity will also provide several scientists to show you how to operate such technology, as well as unlimited access to the human knowledge database for a period of 10 years. All of our technology, it will be available to you. The science officer fell out of the chair. Her entire body had gone weak at the prospect of accessing a nigh-omniscient repository of knowledge. The human took one last look around the room. Are these terms acceptable? Poplu, propping himself up with the help of a nearby table, could only respond in one way. Yeah, yes, yes, that is acceptable. With that, the human smiled, snapped his fingers, and vanished from view. An outpost class station, Yule, Watt, and Lar, came back into being. None of them could quite remember what exactly had occurred just minutes previous and went back to lazily sweeping their sector. A thousand-strong armada popped back into existence. Admiral Hool complained of a splitting headache and took an acetaminophen painkiller and returned to her watchful scouring for emergency beacons. The weapons in holsters across the system rematerialized, as did any other weapon the malfunctioning probe had removed in its fit of rage. Several pairs of pants were reverted to a state of cleanliness, and all recollection of them being anything but clean had been removed from the mind of any admiral, officer, or recruit alike. Scientists across the entire Republic flocked to Zipta to meet with human scientists and study their secrets. A malfunctioning probe returned home to human space. Humanity had unsolved questions to ask for the first time in billions of years.